Chapter 5 Jewish Choral Music in the Great European 19th Century Synagogues The fifth in a series of podcasts on the history and nature of Jewish choral music. In this chapter, we will look at four great synagogue composers from southern Germany, Meyer Kohn, Max Georg Löwenstamm, Israel Meyer Jaffet, and Emanuel Kirchner. Meyer Kohn was born in Schwabach, Bavaria, in 1802. In 1825, Kohn opened a school for Jewish girls in Munich, and in 1832 was a member of a committee organizing a choir for improving the standard of the divine service. Kohn became assistant cantor in Munich, and in 1839, the choir committee of the Munich Synagogue published his book, Vollständiger Jahrgang von Zeltset und Chorgesängen der Synagoge in München, containing his own compositions and others for a choir of three or four voice parts. This was actually the first modern collection of synagogue melodies and included many traditional songs, which had become popular in Bavaria long before their publication. Kohn has the distinction of having been the first in Germany to abolish the irregular singing of Chazan with the Mishororim, an informal choir, and to substitute a more modern musical service. Here is Kohn's setting of verses from Psalm 81, Seuzim Ro, from the Rosh Hashanah evening service.
Max Georg Löwenstamm was born in Moravia in 1814. Levinstam studied Jewish liturgical music in Vienna with the famous cantor Salomon Zulzer. His first cantorial position was in Prague in 1840. In 1842, he was appointed as the Oberkantor at the New Temple in Pest. In 1847, he was appointed Oberkantor in Munich, where he served until his death in 1881. In addition to his cantorial duties, Löwenstamm worked as teacher and chairman of the Jewish community, and he conducted the synagogue choir. A collection of Löwenstamm's synagogue compositions for solo, choir, and organ, Zimirot Le'el Chai, Synagogen Gesenge, was published in Vienna in 1882. Here is Levinstam's setting of verses from Psalm 29, Hovu Ladunoi, sung as the Torah is paraded around the synagogue before returning it to the Ark.
Israel Meyer Jaffert was born in Kassel, Germany, on March 7th, 1818. At the age of 17, Jaffet secured his first position as choral director and religious teacher in Wolfhagen. Subsequently, he held a similar position in Gutenberg, where he came into contact with Rabbi Mordechai Wetzlau, who was to have a strong influence on Jaffet's development and outlook. In 1853, Jaffet was appointed choir master and teacher at the Real Schule, known as Das Yeshurun, an Orthodox synagogue in Frankfurt am Main, where Shimshon Raphael Hirsch was the rabbi. Jaffet remained at this post until his death. Yafet composed a large body of Jewish liturgical music for use in his synagogue. His compositions were melodically and harmonically simple and were heavily influenced by German lead and Protestant hymns. In keeping with Jewish law, his choirs consisted solely of men and boys. Yafet also felt that instruments and elaborate compositions could not compare with the feelings inspired by simple melodies and a cappella vocal music. Yafet's seminal work was Shire Yishurun, published in 1881, a three-volume collection of over 100 synagogue melodies for cantor and choir, covering the liturgy for Shabbat and the festivals, which included commendations from noted composers such as Ignaz Lachner, Giacomo Meyerbeer, and Luis Spohr. Here is Kohn's setting of Ufnucho Yomar, from the Sabbath and Holiday Torah service, originally written to be performed a cappella.
Emanuel Kirchner was born on February 15, 1857, in Rokitnitz, a small village in Upper Silesia. When the family moved to Boyton, Cantor Josef Zinger took young Kirchner into his choir, where he got to sing the new compositions by Salomon Zulze. Kirchner calls his entrance into the choir the beginning of his preparation for his later profession as a cantor. In 1874, Kirchner, then 17 years old, went to Berlin, where he was accepted as a student at the Jewish Teachers College. The director of music at the Berlin Teachers Seminary was the renowned Louis Lewandowski, who was also in charge of cantorial education. Kirchner became a paid singer in Lewandowski's choir in the new synagogue, Berlin, and a few years later was appointed assistant cantor. In 1881, at the age of 24, Kirchner became Oberkantor at the Great Synagogue in Munich and also a teacher of religion in the school system of the congregation and the city. Kirchner thus became the successor of cantor Max Löwenstamm. After only two years of service, the Great Synagogue in Munich gave Kirchner a lifetime contract. He also enrolled in the Academy of Music in Munich to study composition with the famous professor Josef Reinberger, and in 1893 Kirchner himself became professor of vocal art at the Munich Academy of Music. Kirchner exerted great influence on a young cantor who came to him in 1903 to ask for advice, Abraham Zvi Edelson, cantor in Regensburg, who was to become the greatest figure in Jewish musicology. We will meet him in a subsequent chapter. Kirchner's compositions were published in four volumes, Tehilos Le El Elyon, between 1897 and 1926. In 1928, Kirchner retired from active service. Emanuel Kirchner died 10 years later on September 28, 1938. Here now is Kirchner's setting of Psalm 150. Hallelujah.
In the next chapter, we will look at the music of Michele Bonafi in Livorno, Italy, and Samuel Welch in New York.